how have you been? You had a birthday. Uh, I hear you have a birthday present that you're supposed to be wearing. Uh, I was told I was obligated to say that. I don't want to do this. Because I don't want to do this. Do it! I don't want to do this. Do it! Mike sent me this. Mike always sends you... Mike is like the Aunt Clara of from A Christmas Story of RDA. Mike always sends you the nicest presents. Yeah, except I don't think Aunt Clara was was spanking off over the presents after the Speaking of which Mike now I feel like you should definitely send him a pink bunny costume. Well that ain't happening. So Mike sent me this. Oh. Well that's culturally insensitive. It is a Rasta impasta. I'm not entirely sure how this thing is supposed to Am, am I doing it right? Well, first, no. I think the dreads are supposed to be on the back. Okay. And you should probably take the tag off, Mini Pearl. <laughs> That's a joke none of our audience will get. Where, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? Ugh. Now I feel like I need to request the Lonely Islands, Roz Trent. It doesn't actually fit on my head. <laughs> Well, it looks very fetching. You should definitely get dreads. <sighs> also, Mike keeps sending me stuff that has green on it. Yeah, which doesn't work because you have a green screen. He, he always does this. Mike. Anyway, yeah, I had the birthday. I'm not happy about it. Happy birthday. No. Birthdays are a whole day in which people have to celebrate the fact that you exist. I am pro-birthday. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the K. It's so what? One more day closer to not existing. This. So. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna turn 40 this year. Well, next year technically. This. But it's in a few months. This. I'm gonna be officially old. This. Not as old as my husband. <laughs> who's giving me the finger off camera. Get yeah. off my fucking lawn. Legally, it's her lawn, too. Yeah. <laughs> so. Be on the lawn if I want. Anyway, so let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And with the horrible week we have all the weeks we have all been enduring our first story this week we're not going to stay on it very long i'm just going to acknowledge that it happened and it existed this will put a smile on your face i don't care who you are every time i look at this picture i i i laugh because i am 12. is it a monkey no it is not it is not a monkey which is highly surprising for me yeah um, but it's not a monkey. It's now, yes, this is an act of vandalism. I, I will grant this. However, it is a wonderful act of vandalism. It is, it is, it is magnificent. And somehow I'm amazed it would, didn't happen before now. Um, this comes to us from Dublin. So you may be familiar with this location, perhaps, possibly if you've ever been by there. From the Grand Canal docks, someone did a little bit of an update to the sign. Oh. <laughs> I just can't look at it without laughing. There's a fair to middling chance this was my cousin. <laughs> Uh, 
Why is this so funny? <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, grammatically, it's a little weird because <laughs> what is an anal cock? <laughs> well, Tara, yeah, let's it's be growing out of your butt. Well, let's be what what is it an anal cock really? Um, well, no, there is there growing out of your butt. Like, what purpose would that serve? Have you never seen dick butt before? Yes, I have seen. Dick okay, butt. well, there. I guess is that yeah. an, would we call that an anal cock? We might. Is it a rooster that jumps out of your butt? <laughs> Ta da! Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> I just, with all this shit going on in the world, this is delightful in oh. some perverted way. Oh, Ireland! <laughs> this is just so much. I, I every time I look at it, I have to laugh. Because I could just imagine people pulling up and going, Yeah, what's, what's this sign say? Boy. Is that, is that what you consider an Irish brogue? I'm, I, you're, a, Tara, I'm from South Carolina. You're lucky I know how to speak that, English at all. That was, that was definitely Cockney. Boy. Yes, great. Yeah, Irish people don't really say oi. Grady's right there with me on that. <laughs> Grand anal cock. That is, I'm sorry, I don't care who you are. That is, that is wonderful. That is just a little magical, obscene thing that happened in the world. I love that. Now let's get to the less magical stuff that happened in the world. Let's go to Florida. Here's a pop quiz for you, Tara. Um... How does one, and this is in the aftermath of the, the hurricane, the flooding they had down there. How does one contend with gasoline that is leaked into the trunk of their car? Uh, I don't know. I would probably have Dan handle that. <laughs> and so I would contend with it. I got Dan out of bed at 12.30 last night to take care of a slug that got under the back door that the cats were trying to eat. So I would probably call in a lifeline and make my husband deal with it. Well, okay, you had a, you had a much better idea than this lady. Woman vacuuming gasoline sparks explosion at Titusville car wash. How would a vacuum do that? Because it's got electricity, it's got friction, it's got static sparks. Oh, yeah. It, you vacuum up gasoline fumes and kaboom! See, I think that's why I would, I would tag in husband to deal with that, because... Titusville, Florida. Surveillance cameras at Shuttle Car Wash on Cheney Highway captured a potentially life-threatening situation. Owner Billy Barnwell says that at 5 p.m. Monday, an unknown woman vacuumed gasoline from her trunk of the car, causing the vacuum to explode. Wow. What were you... I mean, why would you even use one of those little car vacuums, though? Because those are only dry vacs. They're not wet dry vacs anyway. I, I just... It... Uh... And aren't you supposed to soak up gasoline with kitty litter, or is that oil? That's, I think that's oil. Okay. I'm not sure. But you see, you know what we do? I, mean, we, I don't know if you want a trunk full of kitty litter either. I, I would, the first thing I would do in this circumstance is I would Google that shit. You know? Oh, that's a good answer. Because uh, even right now, if I'm thinking. that shit, you would Google that shit. I don't know how to handle it. If, if it were me personally in this situation, I don't know how to handle it. So my I first. Know. What, what, what do you do in that situation? He probably knows. He knows everything. What? If gasoline leaks into the trunk of your car, what do you do about that? Yeah, cat litter. Something in Oh, Apparently I was right. Cat litter. Okay. So. The you... lady went to the car wash and used the vacuum and it blew up the vacuum. Yeah, that's dumb. That's <laughs> Dan is my expert on all things flammable. Okay, Mike. Grady likes your present way better than I do, because right now he is eating the shit out of the Rasta and pasta. Oh, boy. Put it on Grady. <laughs> Make yourself a little Rasta Grady. That would be the cutest thing ever. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he's lazy enough. 
Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. We're about to humiliate you on the internet, buddy. Come here. He's lazy and white and culturally insensitive. He could wear the shit out of that. What, 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 what are you doing, human? No. <laughs> he saw that coming for him and he was like, oh, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like this. Why are you still the tag on it, dude? Ah, no. He wants no part of this. No. <laughs> this Grady. is the most active I have ever seen Grady. He wants no part of this bullshit. No. Grady, come here. Oh. Grady, come here. No. What are we Fuck doing? You. What the hell are we doing? Oh, I'm supposedly a grown human being. Come here. Come Fuck here. you, thumbs. Come here. Come here. Why? Why you do this? I was right. It's so cute. I was the buffalo soldier. <laughs> I shot the sheriff. But I did not shoot the deputy. Shouldn't it be like, I ate the catnip. But I <laughs> did not eat the fancy feast. Are you okay, buddy? I ate the catnip. Well, you were chewing on it. Fancy feet. It's completely enveloped his head. Now, what's funny is he doesn't care. All right, are you done? He's <laughs> done. I hate you. He's done. I will meow. As soon as you fall asleep, I will meow at you. Are you Are you okay now? Are you 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 want to go away? He wants no part of this shit. Uh, <sighs> Poor Grady. Anyway. Moving on, next story. Oh, we're back in old familiar territory. Here's another little quiz for you and the folks at home. Say you're locked out of your house. What do you do? You call somebody else who has a key. Mm -hmm. Failing that, and I've been in this position, you call a fucking locksmith and spend a lot of money. Mm-hmm. These are good answers. I would even have accepted in a in an emergency, in a 3 a.m. emergency, I would have break accepted a window. I would have accepted break a window. This is not what I would fuck god damn it, fucking again, people. Did he go down the chimney? Fire department rescues man from chimney. God damn it. According to a post on the Tucson Fire Department's Facebook page, the 26-year-old man was rescued Sunday morning after firefighters lowered a rope in the chimney to pull the man out. The man got... <laughs> Grady will have his revenge. The man got far enough that his feet were touching the floor of his house. However, he ultimately got stuck because of the uh, decreased diameter near the fireplace. That happened. Not interested. The man was not injured. After he was pulled out, the man told firefighters he locked his keys in the house and was just trying to get back inside. A neighbor heard him screaming for help. Look at this. And Look thank God his neighbor heard him screaming for help. He could have died in there. That could have been some Edgar Allan Poe shit. Look at, look at this poor idiot. They, they pull him out. He is all nasty. It's, I don't understand why so many people think this is a solution. This is this this is the <laughs> yes. Technically, it is an opening into your house, but it's not a very big one. No, it's filled with carcinogens. And it's uh, you know the the someone's got to pay for that. And if you don't have a fireplace, <laughs> oh, Grady, Grady just like scampered by and attacked the green screen. It was really cute. <laughs> Hi, Grady. I'm gonna upstage you for the rest of the bit now, what you is, asshole. What are you doing? Now then. What? Get stuff. What are you doing? Stop it. I have a show to do. Don't worry about it. I'm doing cat stuff. I mean, I'm, how does this keep fucking happening? People are idiots. That's how. I, I We need the tally. Who's got the fucking tally? I don't know. Somebody worked very hard on that, though. <laughs> Fuck you. Put a hat on me. Who has the tally right now? I'll ruin everything. I don't know where Dottie went. Did Dottie, uh, did Dottie go upstairs? Yeah. Yeah. Dottie this is number five. This is this is number, number five. five.
this year, I think. Wow. Stop going down the fucking tr chimney. Well, oh, and we haven't, we, God damn it. This is like, th th this is, this is old home week. It's Florida and it's almost quaint at this point. I swear to God, this shit's almost quaint. That's sad. That's, this is fucking. Why? Man accused of stealing steak. Lobster putting the food down his pants. And look at his picture. He's like, well, yeah. Why always meat down the pants? Brooks you Brooks. notice we never get vegetables down the pants. We don't eat right in America. Like, nobody ever sticks broccoli down their pants or a nice eggplant. Nope. Brooksville, Florida. Police say a 57-year-old man stole steak and lobster at a Brooksville Walmart and put the food items in his pants. They sell lobster at Walmart? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Fancy for Walmart. Mark Allen Belcola <laughs> is accused of taking six batches of steak, two packages of lobster valued at $172 and putting them down his pants. Six packages of steak? What size were these pants? He was, quote, then observed passing all points of sale. He was taken into custody. He's being held on a $2,000 bond. That's fucking surf and turf for four down his pants. Who's who's going to want to eat that? I mean, at least it was in the package. Yeah. We've had people do this with stuff that was not in the package. And and we've we've said this before. You can't be subtle with this. You can't no, just be like do, do, do. eight packages total. You look like you've just shit a baby. You are idiot square pants. <laughs> Stop you're you're going to get caught. So this is another one for the tally. Now, our next one. Everybody sent this to me. This we're going to hold this back. This is the first time this has happened. On the one hand, this is a touching human interest story and a, a portrait of courage. On the other, this is you idiot! I'm, I'm intrigued to know what could be both of those things. <sighs> there you go. Have a look at the headline. Why won't you click? Man mixes LSD and cough syrup and saves dog from imaginary fire! Oh! <laughs> LSD and caught uh, a half moon man allegedly broke into his neighbor's house to save the family dog from a fire Thursday night. However, there was no fire. Troopers say he was on LSD and hallucinating. 43 year old Michael Orchard, uh, Michael Orchard told them he had mixed LSD with cough medicine Thursday afternoon and they found him standing heroically with a dog in his arms outside of what he thought was a giant inferno. He believed the residence was on fire and he was rescuing the dog. I've not done LSD. Do you need to pump it up with cough, cough medicine? I don't know. <laughs> Isn't LSD enough on its own? <laughs> like, what's the NyQuil going to get you at that point? <laughs> I don't know. That was, you'll clear your sinuses. I mean, good on you for rescuing the dog. That's lovely of you. Well, okay, listen. Orchard went around the neighborhood banging on doors, yelling about a fire, since no one would help because there was no fire. By the way, that's a bad sentence. That's not a sentence. I know. Who wrote this? The animal lover took matters into his own hands <laughs> to save the dog, allegedly driving his BMW sedan through the fence. Troopers say once Orchard got through this fence with his vehicle, he got out, went up to the back door, smashed through it, and went inside to save the family's large white dog. I can only imagine the dog is like, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> can you imagine being this family? <laughs> what the hell happened? Well, your neighbor was tripping balls and thought your house was on fire and rescued your dog. Thank you. 
So on the one hand, he is. Apparently he has a history of doing this, though. (laughs) Neighbors didn't want to go on camera because they're scared of retribution in the tightly packed development. Several neighbors listed things Orchard has allegedly destroyed in the past. This is a pattern. He, well, on the one hand, it's good to know that if your house caught fire, this dude would bust on in and save your puppy. That on, is nice <laughs> on the other hand, this is a hard, stupid ass way to find that out. Well, also, you don't want someone busting in and saving your puppy if your house is not on fire. No, that's you not, don't. That's not useful. I don't need somebody busting in to rescue my kittens if they're not in peril. And I can tell you, the expression on this guy's face looks exactly like what you would expect from LSD and cough syrup. Yeah. I don't understand that combination. (laughs) Who in the channel said that's... Someone in the channel said that's not how you make a flaming mo. What's a... That's a Simpsons thing? That's a Simpsons thing. I don't know what a flaming mo is. Mm. No, I don't. You had a flaming mo? Oh, what is it? (laughs) Clearly, I don't remember. (laughs) So wait, let let me get this straight. You actually went to Universal Studios. Dan had a flaming mo in front of you, and you still don't know what it is. Apparently, it didn't make much of an impression (laughs) on me. I just, it, I, was it a beer? No, it's a drink. Oh. It was sleeping. Oh. Okay. I remember we had butterbeer at Harry Potter World and it was kind of underwhelming. I remember Harry Potter, yes. I just, it, bless his heart is all I can think to say. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to know that... Steph Tamo, having taken LSD, I can say, yes, it's just like that. It's nice to know that for once, when someone takes drugs and does something ridiculous, at least his heart was in the right place. True. Oh, he didn't try to eat someone's face, you know? Which is great. Yeah. When when nobody's face... Where, where... We're improving. Yeah. Oh, God, this next one. All right, we're going right back downhill. Um, This is from New York. So, in recent years, I've quite often heard that the um, Republican Party wants to do African-American outreach. (laughs) Yeah. Um... This, this, this is, this is, this is not how you do it. This is not how you do it. Um, Senate candidate promises Kool-Aid, oh, yeah. KFC, and watermelons at Harlem event. Yeah, this fucking asshole. Candidate for New York State Senate has sparked a firestorm in Harlem after telling NBC4's New York I-Team he was planning to hand out, quote, Kool-Aid, KFC, and watermelons at a campaign event in the primarily black community. John Girodes, uh, or Girodes? Uh, I would, I think Girodes. Girodes. The Republican candidate for New York's 30th district in the November election used the racially stereotypical food reference in an email to the I-team during an exchange about a disputed real estate deal. Jarodis, who is making his second run for the 30th district Senate seat and headlined his campaign (laughs) website with an image of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., said there was nothing about offensive about this planned event. Now listen to this quote from this motherfucker. What I think is anyone who gives free food to people is doing them a favor, Jarodis told the I-team. Quote, get a bunch of people who say it's offensive and let me go into their neighborhood and give it out for free and see if they take it. End quote. Here's, 
here's one of the many, here's one of the lesser known reasons this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Harlem right now is not the Harlem of Luke Cage. No, it is not. Harlem is gentrified as fuck. Yes, it is. Like, Harlem is mostly a pretty swank area right now. And the white people are taking over, kind of unfortunately. Mm. But yes, it's still, but it's still a center of black culture and black art, you know. But donating to help the community, like Harlem is not full of homeless, starving people. No. So one, you're a fucking idiot. <clears throat> Two, you're a racist fucking idiot. Three, you're an arrogant, douchey, racist fucking idiot. Good job. Oh, yeah, you what? Almost, you almost went full Trump. What? So what if I'm giving out, like, these stereotypical things that are associated with black people that have been used to ridicule and, and demean them for, for centuries? They'll still take it because it's free. So how am I the racist? Like, why don't you paint your face black and put on some big red lips in the meantime? Yeah. Do you know the words to mammy, maybe? Yeah. Because, oh, you shit. I love how they act like, what? what I do? What the fuck did I? You know what the fuck you did. You know exactly what the fuck you did. I mean, you fucking, you, you fuck, you know, you, go, go it's, away. It's impressive to me uh, how much they can fuck up African-American outreach. Like, you have to try yeah. to fuck up this bad. Yeah, really. Like, you got to put in an effort to fuck up this bad. But they do. They do. <sighs> well, finally, it's this week. You're, you have Irish family, so you're kind of going to understand this. Tea is a thing in the oh, UK. Yeah. yeah. UK, Ireland, Scotland, yeah. Wales, it's a thing. If you're invited to someone's home and they offer you tea and you say no, they don't get offended, but they think something's wrong with you. Yeah. So it's, it is a staple. It has crossed many, many, many years centuries at this point it's a centerpiece of the culture and now someone has come along and tried to put the internet in the tea it did not work out quite so well i mean there's that picture of kermit drinking tea that's an internet thing Englishman spends 11 hours trying to make cup of tea with Wi-Fi kettle. What? Data specialist Mark Rittman spent an entire day attempting to set up his new appliance so that it would boil on command. Huh. All Mark Rittman wanted was a cup of tea. Little did he know he would have to spend 11 hours waiting for his new high-tech kettle to boil the water. Rittman, a data specialist who lives in Hove, England, set about trying to make a cup of tea around 9 a.m. But thanks to his Wi-Fi enabled kettle, it wasn't long before he ran into trouble. Written and tweeted- I don't understand why, because my sister has a fridge that will do this now. She can text her fridge from upstairs and it'll make a bottle for my niece before she makes it down the stairs. Rittman tweeted, still haven't had a first cup of tea this morning, debugging the kettle. And now Wi-Fi base station has reset Boiling water in saucepan now. Three hours later and still no tea. Mandatory recalibration caused Wi-Fi base station reset. Now port scanning network to find where the kettle is now. <laughs> like, do you need this? <laughs> yes. Do we need Wi-Fi to boil fucking water? <laughs> one, of, one of the... One of the responses we have become. One of the responses on Twitter was, "Why don't you just get a normal fucking kettle? Just get a teapot. They're like uh, ten dollars." This is the internet. When I lived alone and didn't own a fucking frying pan, I owned a teapot. 
This is the Internet of Although, Things. Weirdly, we don't own one now, but we have a Keurig, so. This is the Internet of Things writ large. This is getting yeah. way too complicated to do things that are very, very simple now. You don't even need the kettle because he had a saucepan. You can just it's boil water. It's fucking water. Like, it's tea, man. It's not... And the dude's sitting there like, no, you don't understand. I can voice command the kettle. And I'm sitting there like, just make the fucking tea. <laughs> it's not that hard. But look, I can tell it. Boil water. We were able to do this uh, before electricity. I said, boil water. Give it a minute. It, it's boil water. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have to reset it. It, it lost connectivity for a second. Let, let me let me reset the router. <laughs> We've reached a weird convenience singularity where the things we have created to make life more convenient are really inconvenient. Because they're normally they're made for shit. I'll tell you, Internet of Things, they're made for shit. Yeah. In 11 I get, hours. Like my sister's fridge, like she can put up a photo album on the little video display. And I'm like, why do you need that? Why, why do you need your fridge to show a slideshow? This I is... I need to keep my food cold and maybe make ice. This is, without a doubt, the stupidest possible cyberpunk dystopia. Yeah. This is like what would happen if Douglas Adams was writing cyberpunk dystopia. This is like William Gibson and Douglas Adams just sort of squished together. You have a kettle, 11 hours, still can't make fucking tea. But, oh, it's got a voice command. Well, that doesn't help because it's not making fucking tea. But it can um, blow up and kill you. This, I guess the first thing we've learned tonight is the Internet of Things is not ready for prime time. Just boil the, just make the fucking tea the same way we've been doing it forever. Make the tea. You don't have to be able to tell it, oh, I told it to boil water. It boiled the water. Isn't that nifty? No, you shit. Because all the time you took fucking with the fucking kettle, you could have just turned it on and fucking boil the water. Like six cups of tea in that. <laughs> We've learned this week that obsequious mendacity is not a good shield for blatant racism. It doesn't work. I, I, I know we are in the 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 post fact era we're in the era where what do you have to lose is considered outreach to the african american community yeah so we've learned that being a good samaritan is immediately canceled out by the fact that you're <laughs> tripping on drugs and what you think the danger there is no danger being a Samaritan so, is only useful if you are existing within reality. Yes. Yes. We, we've learned that, um, again, it's 2016. How many, We've been doing this for many years. 2016. Motherfuckers still stuffing meat in the pants to steal it. Yeah. Nobody's going to eat your... I mean, Mark, Mark, nobody's going to eat your pants lobster, Mark. Mm -mm. Nobody's going to say, oh, this is delicious. Where that did you get this? That definitely sounds like a euphemism. Where did you get this lobster, Mark? I got it from my pants. Oh, I could taste it. No one's going to say that. Hey, baby, want to eat my pants lobster? We've learned chimneys are not optional entryways. Not, no, a chimney is not an ingress. It's not. It really isn't. It's it's not designed that way. And by the way, if you don't have a fireplace, that chimney doesn't actually lead into an opening into your house. My house had a chimney when I was a kid. I didn't have a fireplace. <sighs> Guess where it went? Into the pipes. Didn't fucking go anywhere. Maybe hell? Yeah. But not into the house, or at least not a way you could get into the house. The dark umbra, perhaps? I mean, it was Long Island, so maybe. Yeah. We've learned if you've got to get gasoline away from a place, if you have spilled gasoline, don't pull out your fucking shop vac. 
Look something, look, look it up first. Look, Google that shit. Google is your friend. And finally, Grand Anal Cox. <clears throat> need, need I say more? <clears throat> Grand Anal Cox. You should pay somebody to change it to Grady Rocks. There's no why. You can make one. That'd take effort. You think rearranging it didn't take effort? Well, they just... All they did was they pulled off the D huh, and they moved the C over. You just don't love your cat. I, I want, I want, this is like, you know how people have those hang in their kitty posters? <laughs> I want to just take this picture and blow it up and just have a Grand Needle Cox post. That'll get me through this election. <laughs> That'll get me get me on in. Oh, what did Trump do today? You know what? Grand anal cop. There you go. That'll get me through. That'll see me through the next three fucking weeks. He should just make that his new campaign slogan. Uh...